Hello and welcome everybody to this concise webinar. My name is Richard Keeves and welcome to this webinar, uh, Getting Started with GA4. Um, thank you very much for coming. Um, just a quick uh, little intro about our concise webinars, if you have not been to one before. Uh, we try to keep them concise. We try to make them useful. We not try, not here to sell stuff. We are here to help you learn things and we share stuff that we hope is going to be useful for you and your business. Uh, um, my name's Richard, this is uh, introduce Gareth. We're both uh, directors of Concise Digital and um, we are going to be running this. Gareth's actually gonna be doing most of the talking on this particular session. Okay, so this session is about Google Analytics 4, GA4, which replaces Universal Analytics or which we could now lovingly call GA3. And as of the end of June, which is in, in right now, only a couple of weeks away, um, we're recording this one on June 14, 2023. Uh, as of the end of June, Universal Analytics number th version three will cease recording and Google allegedly are going to take all the data offline in, in six months time. Um, so we've, people have got six months to download the, the, and, and access previous reports uh, of, of information in the old version before you swing into the new one. Now, why would you want to use analytics just really quickly it's probably very obvious but some people miss it it's it's not about the data it's not about getting meaningless reports and getting overloaded with crap you'll never use what it's about is understanding who's using your website how they're using your website and what can you learn from that about things that are going right and wrong what opportunities there are for expansion uh, for, for developing your business what action can you take to optimize the website and optimize all of your marketing activities, content preparation activities, sales activities, based on the information that comes from the analytics. And so it's all about improving results. But the other point to make here is it's not a one off thing to use analytics wisely is a process of continuous improvement. Uh, before I hand over to Gareth, and he's going to be running through uh, most of the stuff today, I just want to share another little thing with you that Google uh, with GA4 talks about events. In previous analytics, there was a lot of discussion about goals and what you would do is track goals. Um, the things that are tracked within GA4 are events primarily. I mean, obviously you can still look at where people come, where users, visitors, website visitors come from, how long they stay on the site, what devices they have. But when you're tracking interesting things what's, that, that are going on on your website, what you're tracking are events. Now, these are stages in what we typically like to call the buyer's journey. And with a lot of the journey, it starts with somebody searching for your website, landing on your website, finding information that they can hopefully digest and use, engage with your site, and then shortlisting you or your product as something that they may want to get. They may buy something then and there in that initial visit, or they may come back later. And so the tracking of events is to understand the stages in the buyer's journey and then obviously to try to optimize and improve each of the stages if you can do that if you can improve the, the the different stages in the journey then you can make a huge difference to the results of your website now with that little intro i want to hand over to gareth gareth take it away okay so i'm just going to share my screen to illustrate this uh so bear with me one second so Richard, if you can just do me a size check, looks okay. Um, looks okay. Could be bigger. Bigger, better. Yeah, that, yeah, that's better. Okay, so just to get in the con, um, get your head in the concept of Google Analytics. Um, just I've used an example here. No affiliation. Um, somewhat of a known uh, brand in WA, Ford and Doonan. They sell air conditioning. Uh, I just googled Ford and Doonan. Uh, they're running a Google ad, and then they've got a Google organic listing. Uh, this kind of un helps you understand the sorts of things that they perhaps want people to do. They've flagged, you know, um, links for an air cost calculator, requesting a quote, a service or finding a store. So you could kind of, you know, imagine that business wants one of these four things to um, happen. And so they're the sorts of things that you want to then have as uh, trackable events in your Google Analytics. So in Google Analytics um, 4, by default, 
you don't get events um, in your stats. So if you log into your Google Analytics uh, and go to the acquisition and traffic acquisition page, I personally think the dashboard and the home page of Google Analytics is fa fairly useless. Um, and so I usually go straight to this page here and you can get most of the information that you would want to um, pull out of Google Analytics from this, this single page without having to go to uh, a whole heap of other menus. There's a lot of things that you can click through and a lot of it does get very confusing. Um, if you're a math scientist, you might find it quite interesting, but most people find it overwhelming. So if you go to acquisition, traffic acquisition, you'll then be presented with this screen. Now, what this screen does is it shows you the um, types of traffic uh, that your website gets. So organic search, direct means people went www you know, yourdomain.com. Referral means it came from a, another source like a Yellow Pages or a directory. Organic social is, you know, Facebook, Instagram, those sorts of things. Paid search would be a Google Ads campaign. Organic video would be YouTube. And then paid shopping, if you're running that, is a, is a Google paid shopping ad. So that gives you quite a good breakdown of all of the traffic. You've then got users, uh, sessions, engaged sessions, the time they spent per session, the number of sessions they came back for. And then over on the right, you've got events and conversions. Now, events and conversions are different. A conversion might be send me an inquiry, get a quote, make a phone call. But an event, if we're using Ford and Doon in this example, is they have gone to a store locator or they've gone to an air cost calculator page. But you can make um, in, uh, as many different events as you, as you think you might want. So in this particular example, um, assuming this comes through, we've got things about error pages. We've got clicking on Facebook. We've got watching a video, joining a webinar. So these are all the things that um, we have deemed uh, appropriate on our website that we would like people to do and click on. By the on. way, Gareth, can I just interrupt you and just, sorry, but just to say, by the, Gareth was look, looking at Ford and Doon in, in, within Google, but with the stats that you're looking at here now is actually concise digital stats. Okay, this is not Ford and Doon, and this is this is concise because yeah, sorry for it. obvious privacy reasons, I, I've picked one that is yeah. ours. Um, Ford, Ford and Doon are not a client, and if but if they were, we would never share their stats with you. Um, but uh, yeah, the, this is our own stats. Just so you're using that as an example. Yeah, sorry. So okay. so uh, the the concept is look at your own website, work out what you would like people to do that is not necessarily um, a conversion. So it doesn't have to be a phone call, it doesn't have to be a sale, doesn't have to be an inquiry. You could um, uh, make a list of the sorts of things that you um, think are useful and you would like people to do, and then you can then um, track those um, using events. Now. Um, setting up the events in Google Analytics 4 is somewhat straightforward under the events section, but the bit that is a little bit tricky uh, and generally you probably need a developer to do it for you um, is making those events um, trackable on your website. So a little bit of code has to go in the background of your website. Um, for example, if we go back to our little Ford and Doonan, um, if they had, say, a button, you know, that they wanted people to click on, so, you know, one of these running cost calculators, there's a little bit of code in that button that um, tells Google Analytics that's an event. Uh, unless you know how to do that, that is a little bit tricky. Um, as, but yeah, as far as setting up the events themselves, you can do that in Google Analytics. Um, I was just saying about the difference in traffic uh, and the difference in conversions versus events. Um, you can then, um, once you've got this information in Google Analytics, and I won't go through this in too much detail um, today, but you can then start refining data by um, demographics or locations. Um, for example, you may um, uh, have a, a store in five different cities. Uh, and so you would like to see um, what people in what um, uh, country or, or state or city uh, did, uh, took a certain action. So if you had five stores um, and they had all had addresses, you may see the one in Bunbury um, doesn't get anybody click on the address because they know where everybody knows where the shop is. Or there may be a new store in Joondalup and then you may find that um, no one knows where that is, so a lot of people clicking on the address. So that's something that you would find quite useful. Uh, word, word of caution, I guess you probably can be a bit overkilly with this. Um, 
you know, given this is what we do for a living, we probably overkilled our um, events just slightly too much. But um, I think if as a, as a minimum, you would want to track anything that you uh, found or thought that would be interesting or useful, particularly things like downloading guides, um, store locators, uh, any online calculators, um, more info kind of uh, pages yeah. if you're running an e-commerce. Um, the thing, the things that we call calls to action. When you want yeah. somebody to take an action on a page, then being able to track and 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 we in the web like we call that a call to action, right? And so when when and CTA is the acronym. So when you're trying to understand who, how many people and what sort of people are clicking on a particular call to action, then set that up as an event and track that. Anything that's on a page, like as Gareth was saying, downloading something, even uh, making a, a, a clicking on a button, any sort of useful button that's on your website probably is beneficial to track. Yeah, absolutely. And then in, in your Google Analytics 4, under the events and conversions um, section, there then you can then go through in detail all of the individual um conversion or event actions you can see they're split there uh and and how the people use them over time so for example um this our concise version um between may and june we had 28 completions of the contact form and in the six weeks or so before that we had 32 so that to us says okay well we had a slightly less but because the numbers numbers are, uh, are so close you wouldn't read too much into it but if you were trying to spot one that was probably quite different um you know even most of these are fairly close but if you if you saw a big change in one of these numbers over a certain time period that may alert you to then go and um, review that page on your website and say well what can i do better um is there something wrong with it um and and so on um Anything else, uh, Richard? You want to add to that? Um, no, no, that's 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 good. Yeah. Okay. And then the last thing I'll I'll just say, and this won't work on um, Concise's analytics, obviously, because we it's not an e-commerce business. But if you've got an e-commerce business, so and you're using Shopify or WordPress or WooCommerce or one of those, then you'll get a whole other section um, called e-commerce purchases. Um, which will is, is very similar to events and conversions. Some platforms, this works automatically, like Shopify usually does, and it will pull in carts, checkouts, revenue, and so on. Um, but you can also add additional events on top. You don't have to just use the default um, integration with Shopify. You can add additional uh, items that you might like to track uh, using events. Uh, other than that, um, Google Analytics 4 does look a bit different, but once you've got your head around it, it is quite similar in lots of ways. Uh, and once once you're kind of you know satisfied that it um, they haven't made a mess of it, it is actually quite useful. <laughs> and I think we've think? done a few Gareth, other webinars. What do, you, what do you think are the trickiest things about GA4 for a new like for somebody looking at it? To get their head around that's different. I think it's the way yeah. that it it when you when you kind of access um, Google Analytics from the from the beginning, the terminology is quite different. It 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 more goes into things like lifetime value and um, more. It's it, it, I feel like it's more gauged for uh, sorry more geared up to e-commerce and you know in-app purchases and user journeys. The main reason for it was lots. I think Google has obviously understood that most businesses have multiple web assets. So they have a website, they have might have a mobile app, they might have a Facebook page, they might have a YouTube, you know, all those things. And so they're trying to pull all of that data into one place and then break down all the data by those individual channels rather than it just being isolated to the website itself. But I think some of the terminology and the way that they... Um, have restructured the menu makes it more confusing than it was in the old analytics because the the old analytics i found was quite easy to digest uh, the information whereas um this ga4 has a lot more information a lot more graphs that if you don't know how to read data and you don't know how to compare data then it just makes it even more confusing <laughs> um 
So it's very powerful, but it it does need um, it does need some playing with. You know, you need to set your. One of the things I always say to people if they're using it is always use the compare button. So a lot of people kind of go into Google Analytics and then just just look at the default view, but that's kind of meaningless um, uh, when you just look at it. You know, I mean, what what's what's changed? Um, whereas you could say, well, I'll I'll do May and then I'll compare it to say April. And see how we did um, uh, over time, and then and then you can see oh well we're down in traffic. Then you then you then you would go and investigate that and say well why why were we down in traffic? And you would click on that, um, and then you would say okay down twenty three percent, okay why? And then you might look at the the traffic and say well we had a forty percent decrease in direct traffic in that month, and then that that would kind of lead you down a path and to say well what do we change? Uh, that that's the right way to interpret data rather than just looking at it once a month and going, all right, that looks good. <laughs> yeah, looking at trends and patterns. Correct. And, um, and, and changes. Yeah. Um, Gareth, one of the things that Google has built in with GA4, although it's early days from what I understand, is the ability to integrate machine learning or artificial intelligence. AI. Yeah, and uh, the, buzzword the AI buzzword. <laughs> yeah, um, I mean, it's, it's actually way more than a buzzword, it, but it, it's, it's a huge change in what's going on in the world at the moment, as we probably come into terms with. But they've certainly Google, uh, GA4 is built to accommodate that. So yeah. what are your thoughts on that at the moment? Well, they they're making the search box up here quite um, prominent, and I think they I think they're going down the path of uh, you being able to ask Google Analytics fairly complicated questions. But at the moment, uh, it it more points you to certain pieces of data. So, um, for example, it says you know ask Analytics intelligence. So that sounds all very nice and fancy, but really it's really just getting you to a um, uh, to a number. So if I click the month over month growth in users, all it's doing is giving me a number over here. It, it doesn't, it doesn't really give me any kind of clever um, insights. It just, it just kind of answered the, the basic question. Um, if I type in, I was doing some playing with this yesterday. Um, we, we do a lot of work for schools. So I typed in how, how many um, new users, went on the schools page right now i thought maybe that was clever enough to figure that out but it wasn't <laughs> so it, it just gave me prompts to um uh reports uh, but uh, what what would be nice is if you could ask it a question that was quite layman terms um language and it should be clever enough to know that we do have a web a page on our website that is labeled schools and it should be able to work that out, but um, it, it wasn't that clever. So eventually it might get there, but um, uh, I think I, it's got some work to go. I would say it's probably a matter of months or... Possibly, yeah. yeah, um, yeah. So so Gareth, what, what are your thoughts on how to view the customer journey and, and the process of what's going on? You, in yeah, the, uh, well, if, if an, an e-commerce website is much easier because um, there is, a whole section already set up called user purchase journey and in there it'll take a take it you through uh where the where the um, user came from uh did they uh, buy did they add to cart did they check out so on but if you have a, a non-e-commerce website then you need to tell google analytics what you want to track and you kind of need to set up your own funnel as such and that's the idea of using events um we may decide that we want people to watch a video. So there may be a video on a, on a page somewhere. And so again, has nothing to do with phone calls or emails or getting an inquiry or getting a quote. We just want people to watch, watch a particular video. And so we've set that video up as an event. And so if they start watching that video, then it is tracked. Um, so, and you can, you can make, uh, I don't believe there is a limit on these. There might be, I can't remember if there is or there isn't, but, um, don't over, don't overkill it, you know, just, just come up with maybe five or 10 and see what happens. And then you can always tweak them as you go. Yeah. And with the ability to drill into finding out not just, uh, how many people clicked on that button, but where they came from in order to click on that button and what was the pathway that they came through. We were trying to keep this session not only concise, but also uh, also relatively 
um, sort of simple. Um, because there's so much we could dive in and we could run a three hour workshop on all of this and explore your analytics. If you would like to explore your analytics, um, and then let us know. And because you've been to one of these webinars uh, or this webinar, um, Gareth is very happy to spend half an hour with you. Uh, no charge. <laughs> That's news to me this morning. <laughs> yeah, no, no, he is, he is. He's very happy to spend half an hour with you looking at your analytics and helping you understand things or think, think, thinking, figuring out what you might want to set up. Particularly uh, if you've got something interesting to look at. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, I'll be which, there. <laughs> which everybody does if they look hard enough. Um, <laughs> but if <laughs> so, send Gareth an email. I'm, I'm not the uh, Gareth. Yeah, Rich one. is just going to pawn I'm, me out to do it, I'm, but that's fine. <laughs> yeah. Well, give us a call. We're very happy to help. Um, yeah. And uh, thanks very much. That's that's really we're going to wrap up now. This this was kind of a uh, looking at looking at GA4, hoping to not scare you with it, but to say, hey, this is a useful tool. It's useful because it helps you improve your results and improve what's going on in your business. So that's really the purpose of of Google Analytics and GA4 is the next stage. So Gareth, anything to cool. add on? To that? No, that's it. Okay. Thanks Have very much, day. everybody. All See the best. Ya. See you. Bye. Bye.